Number one. In this question, you will be asked to talk about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. What characteristics do you think make someone a good parent? Explain why these characteristics are important to you. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number two, in this question, you will be asked to give your opinion about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Some students prefer to work on class assignments by themselves. Others believe it is better to work in a group. Which do you prefer? Explain why. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number three. In this question, you will read a short passage about a campus situation and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. The university's dining services department has announced a change. Read an announcement about this change. You will have 45 seconds to read the announcement. Begin reading now. Now listen to two students discussing the announcement. 
Do you believe any of this? It's ridiculous. What do you mean? Well, it is important to eat healthy foods. Sure it is. But they're saying yogurt's better for you than an omelet or than hot cereal? I mean, whether something's hot or cold, that shouldn't be the issue. Except maybe on a really cold morning. In that case, which is going to be better for you? A bowl of cold cereal or a nice warm omelet? It's obvious. There's no question. No, I'm not going to argue with you there. And this whole thing about saving money. What about it? Well, they're actually going to make things worse for us, not better. Because if they start cutting back and we can't get what we want right here on campus, well, we're going to be going off campus and pay off campus prices. And you know what? That'll be expensive. Even if it's only two or three mornings a week, it can add up. The woman expresses her opinion of the change that has been announced. State her opinion and explain her reasons for holding that opinion. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number four. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read the passage from a sociology textbook. You have 50 seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture about this topic in a sociology class. This is a true story from my own life. In my first year in high school, I was addicted to video games. I played them all the time, and I wasn't studying enough. I was failing chemistry. That was my hardest class. So this was a conflict for me because I wanted a good job when I grew up, and I believed I knew that if you want a good career, you got to do well in school. But I just couldn't give up video games. I was completely torn. And my solution was to, to change my perspective. See, the only class I was doing really badly in was chemistry. In the others, I was, I was okay. So I asked myself if I wanted to be a chemist when I grew up. And the fact is, I didn't. I was pretty sure I wanted to be a sociologist. 
So I told myself my chemistry class didn't matter because sociologists don't really need to know chemistry. In other words, I changed my understanding of what it meant to do well in school. I reinterpreted my situation. I used to think that doing well in school meant doing well in all my classes. But now I decided that succeeding in school meant only doing well in the classes that related directly to my future career. I eliminated the conflict, at least in my mind. Using the example discussed by the professor, explain what cognitive dissonance is and how people often deal with it. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number 5. In this question, you will listen to a conversation. You will then be asked to talk about the information in the conversation and to give your opinion about the ideas presented. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Marnie, what's wrong? Oh, I'm just struggling about what to do. I won an award from the Creative Writing Institute for a story I wrote, and... That doesn't sound like anything's wrong. Well, it's a huge honor to win, and there's an award ceremony they've invited me to attend, which I'm so excited about, but... And here's what's frustrating. I've got a biology exam that's scheduled for the same time. Uh-oh. Well, have you talked to your professor about this? Yeah, she said I could write a five-page paper instead, and I have lots of ideas and know I could do a good job, but... But what? Well, writing a paper would take up so much time, a lot more time than studying for and taking the exam. I have lots of other schoolwork to deal with. Oh. Or you could have someone else receive the award for you. I mean, go in your place and accept it on your behalf. Maybe. I'd still get the award and the money that way. Ooh, you won money too? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? But anyways, my parents were really looking forward to coming and seeing me on stage, shaking hands with the Institute's president and all. I'd hate to disappoint them. True. I'm sure they're really proud. Like I said, I'm still struggling about what to do. The speakers discuss two possible solutions to the woman's problem. Briefly summarize the problem then state which of the solutions you recommend and explain why. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.
Number 6. In this question, you will listen to a short lecture. You will then be asked to summarize important information from the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Now listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. The professor is discussing advertising strategies. In advertising, uh, various strategies are used to persuade people to buy products. In order to sell more products, advertisers will often try to make us believe that a product will meet our needs or desires perfectly, even if it's not true. The strategies they use can be subtle, uh, friendly forms of persuasion that are sometimes hard to recognize. In a lot of ads, repetition is a key strategy. Research shows that repeated exposure to a message, even something meaningless or untrue, is enough to make people accept it or see it in a positive light. You've all seen the car commercials on TV, like uh, the one that refers to its roomy cars over and over again. You know which one I mean. This guy is driving around, and he keeps stopping to pick up different people. He picks up three or four people, and each time the narrator says, Plenty of room for friends, plenty of room for family, plenty of room for everybody. The same message is repeated several times in the course of the commercial. Now, the car uh, the car actually looks kind of small. It's not a very big car at all, but you get the sense that it's pretty spacious. You'd think that the viewer would reach the logical conclusion that the slogan uh, misrepresents the product. Instead, what usually happens is that when the statement plenty of room is repeated often enough, people are actually convinced it's true. Um, another strategy they use is to get a celebrity to advertise a product. It turns out that we're more likely to accept an advertising claim made by somebody famous, a person we admire and find appealing. We tend to think they're trustworthy. So um, you might have a car commercial that features a well-known race car driver. Now, it may not be a very fast car. Uh, it could even be an inexpensive vehicle with a low performance rating. But if a popular race car driver is shown driving it and saying, I like my cars fast, then people will believe the car is impressive for its speed. Using the examples from the talk, explain how persuasive strategies are used in advertising. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.